Hi everyone, I'm Miss Roz and I'm a Pace teaching artist. In today's art video, we're going to be drawing your community like a famous artist named Paul Clay. This will be a social living arts integration lesson. What is a community? Raise your hand if you know. A community is a place where people work, live, and play. We live in a community called Acadiana, which might include Lafayette, Scott, Karen Crow, Dusson, Youngsville, or Broussard. Where do you live? Do any of these cities sound familiar to you? I live in Lafayette. How many of you live in Lafayette? Great, that means we're all neighbors. Next, we're going to look at a picture of a community so we can spot some important places that our community needs. Let's look at these communities. Do you see some important places that every community needs? Let's look closely at these pictures. What are some of these buildings you see far? Do you see one that could be a school? A school is where all the children learn. Could some be a home for people to live that keep us safe? Can you spot a store? The grocery store is where we buy our food. The bank helps save our money. There are many stores that sell all kinds of things like clothes, toys, cars, restaurants that sell pizza and burgers. Yum. What about all those places where people help keep us safe, like the police or the fire station? All of these places are very important to a community to make a nice place to live. There's also the post office where letters can be mailed and the electricity and the gas offices. How about parks? I think every community needs a place for children to play like a playground or a soccer or baseball field, don't you? Today, we're gonna to be drawing something called a cityscape like this. It's art where many buildings in a row are shown. We're also going to learn about a famous artist named Paul Clay, and we're going to look at some of his paintings that look like cities. Let's look at a famous artist named Paul Clay and some of his artwork that remind me of a community. And while we are looking at the art, I want you to notice the shapes that you see. We are about to use those shapes and we're going to draw our very own cityscape in just a few minutes. So sit back and look at this slideshow. Paul Klee was a Swiss and German artist. He liked to use cubism in his art. This is a portrait of him. A portrait is a picture of a person or a pet. He lived about a hundred years ago. That's a long time ago. And we still like to look at his art. This is his self-portrait. You may think it looks abstract, not realistic. Kind of funny looking. You may remember that art word, abstract, from a lesson last week about the artist named Kandinsky, who was also an abstract artist. Now, let's look at some other ones. What shapes do you notice first? The circle. This painting is called The Castle and the Sun. I think that the circle is the sun. I like that he painted it with a warm color. And then look at all those squares and rectangles. Most buildings are built with four walls that make square or rectangular buildings. Next, do you see the triangles? Triangles have three sides. 
Squares and rectangles have four. Triangles usually are the roofs. Sometimes you can put shapes together to make other shapes. Two triangles can make a square and four smaller squares can make a larger square. We're gonna try some of that in our drawing. In this city, I see curve lines cut out of shapes. What could that be? To me, it makes me think of a bridge over a river or a lake. Every community usually has some type of river, like the Vermilion River, or a pond, like the ones we see at Girard or Beaver Park. And cars need a bridge to go over it or a small bridge to walk over a pond. Have you ever visited one of those places that have a bridge? Maybe a boat can fit under the bridge through those curves. This next one has shapes that make me think of something. What does it make you think of? I think of sailboats. Did you think of something different? Yes or no? It's interesting how just a shape can make you think of an object. It's because our whole world is made up of shapes. Next, we're going to listen to a book about Paul Clay and his art called The Cat and the Bird. It's a children's book inspired by Paul Clay. The author's name is Geraldine Elsner, and the illustrator is Peggy Neal. You will notice some of his art in the illustrations. There's a famous painting of his very own cat painted by Paul Clay in the book as well. There's something else you'll notice in many of the illustrations that Paul Clay would draw in many of them you will see his patchwork of squares like this. Lots of squares and rectangles shape put together. Let me know when you spot one of these by giving me a thumbs up. Y'all ready to listen? The Cat and the Bird. I had everything I needed to be happy in my house with the blue shutters. I had a cozy basket, warm milk, and toys, grass to nibble on, and a shiny tag on my collar with my name engraved on it. Anybody spot a patchwork? I should see those thumbs up. But my perfect house was a gilded cage. It was locked up tight. The key turned around twice. See Paul Clay's cat? So from morning to evening and from evening to morning, I sat by the window and dreamed. The garden outside was so wonderfully beautiful. When I closed my eyes tight, I could sense the scent of the chestnuts, the red leaves of autumn, the soft carpet of moss beneath my paws, the murmuring of the stream, and high up in the treetop, you. How beautifully you sang. How deliciously beautiful. For ages, I would listen to you and lick my lips. I have to admit, I wanted to catch you very much. One stroke of my claws, a snap of the teeth, and crack. I felt I could already taste you in my mouth completely forever. But something inside of me was even stronger than the urge to devour you. Deep inside, I envied you. You were free, free to fly wherever you wanted, to come and go as you pleased. You were free and I was captive. So I devoured you only with my eyes 
and then I called out to you. Hello, bird. Your beak is so sharp. You can bore holes into the tree trunks. Why don't you peck at the bars of my prison? And you answered me with a song. A cat in a cage, what a funny sight. But would I be wise to help you? How can I be sure that you won't eat me up? I looked at you straight in the eyes and said, I give you my word, plain and simple. And a promise is a promise. This was enough for you. Peck, peck. Without a moment's hesitation, you began to peck away the bars of my cage. And soon I was free, scampering after you on the roof of my house with the blue shutters. And bounding from the tower to the bridge and from the bridge to the chimney, I sprang to the edge of the horizon and there I danced for joy in the moonlight. That looks like some art we looked at earlier of Paul Clay's. Thank you, thank you, little bird. I will never forget you. Your image will always be engraved in my memory, completely forever. Cat and the bird. This is one of his paintings of his cat. And this tells all about Paul Clay's life. Did you enjoy that book? Great. Wasn't that a cool book about the cat and the bird? Now it's time for us to draw our cityscape. You're going to need a white piece of paper and your crayons. Make sure you have a black crayon or a marker to draw with. I have all different colors, pink, red, yellow, orange. You can use any colors in this project. Y'all ready to start? Clear off your table or your desk. And I'm putting my paper like a landscape. When you put it like this, it's a landscape. And when you put your paper like this, it's a portrait. So today we're doing landscape. Let's choose a dark color like black, blue, purple. Let's write our name first. I'm writing my name at the top. So I want you to write your name at the top. This is the top of our paper. This is the bottom of our paper, but we're writing it at the top. Got that done? Great. First, let's practice some of the shapes we've been seeing in Paul Clay's cityscapes. Who's thinking of the first one? I'm thinking of that sun. What shape was that? That's right, the circle. Let's practice making a circle first. When we make a circle, we start at the top and we go around slowly until the other line meets at the top, like that. Now you try it, start at the top, Go around slowly till the line goes all the way back up to the top. A circle is a geometric shape. It's a shape we know the name of. If that circle didn't come out okay, try it again. Practice makes perfect. Good, much better. What's the next shape we saw a lot of? I'm thinking square. Watch Miss Ross draw a square first. A square has four sides and they're all about the same size. So when I draw a square, I draw a straight line, then just leave a little space, and then I draw another straight line. I look to see if these two lines are about the same length. That means they're, they're just the same on each side. So the one on the left, then there's one on the right, and then I draw the top line, and then I draw the bottom line, all four sides. Some people can draw it like this, the left side, the bottom, the right, and go all the way around. If yours looks a little like a rectangle, that's okay. You can try it again. 
squares have four equal sides. Now rectangles have two long sides and two short sides. Let's practice those. In Paul Clay's buildings, he put very tall rectangles. So there's my long line on the left. There's my long line on the right. One on the top and one on the bottom. Let's try it. Let's draw the one on the left. Let's draw the one on the right. Let's draw the one on the top and the one on the bottom. That's a tall rectangle. Also, we can draw other straight lines to make more shapes inside there. We can draw another straight line and now we have two squares. Paul Clay would do some fancy things like this. Watch me. He would draw a line from this corner diagonally all the way to this corner. Now our one square is what? Two triangles, you see that? Triangles have three sides and when we put them together, it makes a square. Let's try it with another square. Watch what else we can do. Watch Miss Roz draw the square like this. And we can draw a diagonal line this way. And how many squares do we have? That's right, two. Now what if I draw another diagonal line this way? Now our square is made by one, two, three, four triangles. So we can put shapes together to make other shapes. That's pretty cool, huh? Watch me do this. Here's a square. What if I draw a line vertically right in the middle I have what? What do you see right here? Two rectangles can make a square, right? What if I do this again in this one, a vertical line and a horizontal line like a cross? Now we have four small squares. Try that with some of yours. See what you can make. Try some with some triangles. Try some with some squares. We're getting some good practice in. So when we draw our buildings, we can show some of that. Great, are we all ready to draw? Okay, so let's turn our paper over to the clean side. And this whole space, it's going to be our cityscape. That means we're gonna draw buildings all the way across from the left to the right. And we're gonna put our sky at the top and our buildings at the bottom. So we're gonna think about all the things we need to include in here. So every time we draw a building, we might be thinking, that might be the grocery store, or that might be the toy store, or whatever you think it might be. All right, y'all ready to get started? We're gonna be drawing together, but our pictures do not have to look the same. I'm gonna be drawing some shapes, and you're gonna be drawing some different shapes on your paper as well. So the first shape we're gonna draw is the sun. You might wanna put your sun somewhere on the left, somewhere on the right, or maybe right in the middle. I think I'm gonna put mine right in the middle, near the top. Remember when we start our circle, we start slow, we start at the top, we go all the way around. That's gonna be our sun. We'll color it in just a minute, okay? Next, we're gonna move down to the very bottom edge. Our buildings are gonna go all the way to the bottom edge because that's where the ground is. Watch Miss Roz. The first building, I want it to be maybe about this tall. So I'm gonna go right near the edge of my paper and I'm drawing a straight line as close as I can to the edge. Decide how tall you want your building and use your black and draw you a straight line as close to the edge as you can. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but we're gonna to try to get it as straight as we can. Great, that's the side of our first building. I'm gonna move my crayon over. I'm gonna decide my building's gonna be about this wide and I'm gonna draw another straight line. There's the two long sides of my rectangle. There's the first building. 
I think mine's going to be a hotel. Maybe it has a lot of floors in it. You might have to use an elevator to get to the top or an escalator to get to the top. All right, put the short line on the top. There's our first building. Do you have your first building? If you want, you can make the very bottom line too, but you don't have to. So our first building. How about a roof? Let's put the triangle on the top. How many sides does the triangle have? Three. Right, so at the top, I'm gonna draw my slanted line here. My slanted down, line down to here, so that side up the mountain, down the mountain, and then across will be the bottom of that roof. There's our first building. Mine's a hotel, what's yours? Great, let's move on to building number two. Maybe this might be the toy store. So we're gonna do, this one's not gonna be as tall as the other one. So I'm gonna decide how tall. Hmm, maybe about this tall. Let's draw a little short straight line how tall you want your building to be. This is building number two, and it's very close to building number one. So make another straight line, as wide as you want. Mine's just a medium size. Yours might be narrow, or it might be wider. Now let's go all the way down to the bottom. That's where the people get in to the building, where the doors would be. We're gonna wait to draw windows and doors. We're trying to be more like Paul Clay, and he didn't put a lot of windows and doors in his buildings. What do we need to put on top? That's right, we can't forget our roof. Up the mountain, down the mountain. I have two buildings. Mine's a hotel and a toy store. What are yours? I'm ready for building number three. How about you? Let's make a tall, skinny building this time. You wanna try that? This time, I'm gonna start at the very bottom. I'm going slow, I'm going really super, super, super close to this other building. It's going taller, it's gonna keep it as straight as I can. I don't wanna bump into my sun. There's my tall building. This one is gonna be pretty skinny. So right next to it, I'm gonna draw my next line. Look how skinny this building is. It's not very wide, we say it's narrow. So these are two lines. There's the left side of the building and there's the right side of the building. We say these two lines are parallel because they're never gonna cross. They're right beside each other. Don't forget the top. And there's is the roof. We have three buildings. What could be in this skinny building? Hmm. I think it might be a pet store. Maybe the dogs are down here and the cat's in the middle and maybe they have fish in the third floor. And maybe in the fourth floor, maybe all the pet food. This might be a pet store. So far we have three buildings. I'm ready for number four. So far our buildings have all been rectangles. Maybe we can make a shorter one. What shape would that might be? It might be a square, huh? There's the top of the square. Here's the bottom of the square. Hmm, that could be a restaurant right there. Maybe on top of the restaurant, I'll put another square, and maybe this might be some apartments where people live. Because sometimes they do that. They have businesses on the bottom and places to live on the top. I'm gonna add another triangle roof like that. Hmm, I'm thinking of doing something fancy. What are y'all thinking like Paul Clay would do? Would he try something like this? Some diagonal or some vertical or straight lines? Can you make one of your squares fancy by adding some lines in there? Good. So far I have a hotel, I have a toy store, a pet store, a restaurant. We have four buildings. I can fit some more, can you? Let's keep going. All my buildings are very, very close. Here's my next one. This one might go up even taller. You can make your buildings as tall as you want.
This one might be a barber shop or a beauty parlor where you go to get your hair cut, huh? Yes, don't forget to put the triangle on top. Good, I have place for one more. Maybe you have place for two more. Let's fill it all up, all the way across. This one might not be as tall. I like how my shapes are different sizes, like the tallest, next tallest, medium, then small, then the very smallest. See how they're all different sizes? Are your buildings different sizes? So we're putting shapes together to make buildings. I've made it all the way across. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to make sure your paper is filled with shapes from the left to the right. We're making a cityscape. Everybody say that word, cityscape. That's what kind of art we're making. If you want, you can go back and add some straight lines across to make smaller shapes. Only if you want. Great. This one kind of looks like the castle in the sun. It's a lot of different buildings, or maybe on a city street. Good. So now that we've finished drawing, we're going to spend our time coloring. I'm going to pick all the different colors that I have so my paper is very colorful. A trick to coloring this many shapes quickly is that every time I pick a color, I'm going to color two different shapes with it before I choose another color. So I'm coloring my roof over here purple. And then I'm gonna move over here. Maybe I'll color this shape. So I never color just one shape. I color two. You might even wanna color three if you really like that color, if it's your favorite color. So there's purple, hmm, next is red. When I color, I go up and down, or sometimes people color across. I try to fill in my shapes so there's no white spaces. There's one square that's red, then I'll go over here and color another square or another shape that's red. It helps me to color quicker. So we're gonna have fun coloring our shapes. You may color faster than me or slower than me. It doesn't matter, we're just having fun coloring. Yellow is a warm color. We say it's a warm color because it's the color of the sun usually when we color our suns. Hmm, I'm thinking, do I wanna color my sun yellow? Another warm color we could choose would be orange or it could be red, because those are all warm colors in art. I'm thinking orange for my son, but you can choose what you like. A warm color is a color like the sun or like fire. So in art, we call those the warm colors. Good. Let's move on to a cool color. In art, we use colors for cool colors like blue, green and purple. We say they're the cool colors because they're cool like water, they're cool like grass, and we just say purple's cool. So I'm gonna color some things with the cool colors. Now, if you don't have time to color this all today, I want you to keep it in your desk or in your near your table so you can go back to it and color it when you have a little bit more time. We're going to color the entire paper, even the sky. Well, I've colored all my buildings, and when you get to this point, the next thing we're going to do is to color the sky. The sky doesn't always have to be blue. Sometimes at sunrise or sunset, I see a lot of pretty colors in the sky. So I'm gonna pick one of those colors. Sometimes I see the sky is pink. And when we color the sky, I'm coloring softly. You ever colored softly? It's kind of like you're shading. I'm starting at the top and the sky actually goes all the way down until it meets the very top of those buildings because the sky goes all the way down to the ground. So we have to color around those triangles. 
We have to shade around our sun and all the way down. I'm just giving it a little sunset color. Sometimes people use purple. You can even color a little bit between the buildings because sometimes the sky could show between there. Sometimes people could use purple as a good sunset color. Or if you like blue, you can color it blue as well. You really could use any color you'd like because art is all about choices and the artist gets to pick the color they like. I think we did an awesome job today on our Paul Clay cityscape, don't you? It's a lot to color, but it looks really great and really colorful and you're gonna be so proud of the hard work that you've done. Well, that was fun. You all did great. If you didn't get to finish coloring, you can finish whenever you have extra time during the day. I hope you enjoyed drawing with me today. Show your work to a grown-up and tell them all about what you drew. Explain to them what a cityscape is and how you drew a city using shapes and colors. Hang your artwork somewhere where others can see it when you're done. I know others will be amazed at your artwork and I bet you're gonna get many compliments. I hope to see you next week where we will be doing a different project. Check out our other videos on the LPSS website or the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel under Pace Art. Be sure to try out a creative movement art lesson as well this week and keep your bodies moving. See you next time.